play that. I don't see anything, Mom. I don't see anything. You see him? Are they making you happy? Yeah. yeah? Well, that's good. How many? Four? Let's talk about this. Let's talk about it. First thing I got to ask, why the spooky music? Uh, most people are looking at this as if it is some wonderful thing from their deity, their God, what they believe in. So why the spooky music? Uh, makes you wonder if it's some kind of Blair's Witch project or something like that. But if it is a true, if it is true, is it true? If it is true that this woman is on her deathbed and at this time frame she is having dreams, hallucinations, whatever you want to call it. Um, here's the fact of the matter is, scientifically, we can show how people will see visions when they are on their deathbeds. I've, I've witnessed this before myself. And when I looked at the oxygen levels to the brain, the oxygen levels were incredibly low. Now, if you know anything about that scientifically, when you have low oxygen levels to the brains, you have a tendency to, to, to hallucinate. And in those hallucinations, what is most likely you're going to see? Things that your subconscious brain and your conscious brain has agreed upon are possible realities. So in this case, if you are Christians, you're going to see Christianized things. If you were Muslims, you're going to see Islamic things. If you were Buddhist, you're going to see Buddhist things. And I've seen it happen on different accounts. I've seen where the person was Hindu and they started saying they saw Krishna. They saw Brahma. They would see the different deities to which they grew up believing in or that they believed in. And in the same way, I saw Christians who I see angels and or demons or something that's more Christian oriented. And at the same time, I've seen people who didn't believe in none of it. And they saw stars and planets. You know, they saw darkness. And they didn't see any of those things. Which lets me know that this is a conditioning of the mind. In the same way that when you have a near-death experience uh, and that DMT washes over your brain, so when you're also close to death, the oxygen levels are low. You can also experience having DMT wash over your brain or released in your brain uh, from your pineal gland. And when that happens, then you hallucinate again. This is the process to which people take ayahuasca journeys and they have these different visions uh, of different things. And usually those things are what's incorporated within yourself, what's in your subconscious, within your conscious. So in all these occasions near death, ayahuasca trips, uh, low oxygen to the brain, everything comes from the mind, which coincide with the comedic and the Kabbalion principle of that the universe is mental, that all is mind and the universe is mental. So from the mind, there is the greatness of possibilities of reaching as in the law of correspondence as above, so below the different planes from the matter plane A, matter plane B, matter plane C, and then go up to spiritual plane C, spiritual plane B, spiritual plane A, that different planes of understanding and consciousness happen in these states of being stressed, whether through ingesting ayahuasca or mushrooms or something like that, or lack of oxygen to the brain or DMT released into the brain, due to near-death trauma. So, I hate it for anybody's loss, even though I don't believe in death. 
that's just the transmutation of one energy form to the next. But I understand the loss of the mat of the gross matter plane of being in that personal presence. So, but beyond that, for me, this woman is experiencing either DMT releasing into the brain or low oxygen levels to the brain, and she's mentally creating what she has been taught to create for probably her whole life. So y'all have a great day. And remember always, you got to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibrations.